brought to you by Squarespace, the all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence and run your business. Tesla has a market cap right around $727 billion as I'm filming this video. If we look at their growth over the past year or so, we can see that their market cap has nearly tripled depending on when you look. Apple currently holds the throne with the highest market cap of any company at $2.25 trillion. And many, including Elon Musk, seem to expect that Tesla could soon jump from number eight all the way up to number one. Today, we're going to look at how this could be possible. So let's get into it and keep in mind that this is not financial advice. As I mentioned, Tesla's stock and market cap have nearly tripled in the past year. But the primary factor most look at is the actual performance of the company. If we look at Tesla's most recent delivery numbers, we can see that they delivered about 184,800 vehicles, only about 2,000 of which were Model S's and X's in Q1 of 2021. This is important to note because they refreshed the Model S and X in the beginning of the year and have not actually released this new version. In Q4 of 2020, for example, they delivered close to 19,000 of those vehicles. So once those cars are back being delivered, this will boost Tesla's delivery numbers and we'll talk about that more in a minute. First, a popular analyst named Jed Dorsheimer increased his personal price target for Tesla from $419 to $1,071. This higher price point would put Tesla at a market cap over $1 trillion. His reasonings were more energy related and related to things that most people aren't even considering for Tesla. He said, quote, we also believe Tesla holds a several year lead and is now expanding aggressively into storage and thus feel our multiple is warranted. This falls in line with what Elon Musk has said previously, stating, quote, I think there is generally a lack of understanding or appreciation for the growth of Tesla energy, as Kunal was talking about. In the long term, I expect Tesla energy to be the same or roughly the same size as Tesla's automotive sector or business. What Elon is referring to here here is their energy products like solar panels, solar roofs, power walls, mega packs, and virtual power plants. Their solar roof is a revolutionary idea combining a quality roof with solar panels into one package so that customers don't need to buy both separately. So far, however, rollout of this product has been slow, so the potentials of it have been somewhat overshadowed by other products. Their mega packs allow for energy storage on a massive level, and as I talked about in my last video, Apple will be using 85 Tesla mega packs to store energy from their solar farm that will power their main Cupertino factory. This is just one large order, but it shows that the largest company in the world, Apple, holds value in Tesla's energy products. It's a great endorsement for Tesla and a great example of how these products can be used by major companies in the future. Tesla's virtual power plant is a technology that allows stabilization of the grid in areas that have difficulty like South Australia. Once completed, this particular virtual power plant will include 50,000 homes fitted with five kilowatt solar systems and 13.5 kilowatt hour Tesla batteries. They work together to deliver solar power and energy storage. So far, the project is only about 1 50th complete, but quote, although the virtual power plant is in its early days, it is already demonstrating how it can provide the network support traditionally performed by large conventional generators. This technology uses Tesla's battery storage and energy products, as well as their own software with AutoBidder that quote, maximizes the value of energy storage assets in wholesale electricity markets. Essentially, these technologies are only being used used on a small scale so far, but are proving useful. As battery costs come down everywhere, this will be more attainable for companies and cities, and Tesla could see a huge growth for their energy business. All of this is completely separate from their vehicle business. Now, in terms of their vehicle business, Tesla currently sells four cars and temporarily is actually only delivering two of them, the Model 3 and the Model Y. Those are their most popular vehicles due to their lower price point comparatively. Still, their cars start at a premium because they are fully electric, but electric cars are becoming more and more popular and Tesla has a huge advantage in that space. The original Model S launched in 2012 and has now gotten to the point of a 412 mile range in the $80,000 version as well as up to a 520 plus mile range in the upcoming $150,000 version. This is an extreme performance luxury vehicle price point with insane specs so Tesla's real growth will be seen in their more affordable vehicles. The Model 3 starts at $38,490 US dollars and gets a range of 263 miles. The more expensive long range version of that gets 353 miles of range, still under $50,000, which is an incredible achievement compared to other electric vehicles on the market thus far. Most competitors are lucky if they hit an EPA range over 300 miles. Now there's another discussion to be had about the way the EPA tests and whether or not it reflects real world range, but still Tesla holds the throne for EV range available to purchase today. The best alternative for a Model 3 might be a Chevy Bolt, and that car gets a range close to the standard range plus at 259 miles and a similar 
similar starting price and slower 0 to 60. Getting electric vehicles to be affordable is the biggest challenge moving forward for every company making EVs. A starting price of $38,490 is great for what a Model 3 provides because batteries are expensive, but it's not a price point within reach for a lot of people. Additionally, the long range version is more realistic to own as your only car in order to drive longer distances, and that's approaching $50,000. The reason I'm talking about this is because going forward, Tesla has laid out huge plans for making cheaper electric vehicles. And it's a big part of why people think they could be worth over $1 trillion in the future and even pass Apple. At Battery Day, Tesla laid out a huge plan to reduce battery costs by up to 56%. This plan involved everything from the sourcing of materials to production and battery integration into their future vehicles. The main tangible thing they see this leading to is a future $25,000 EV. In other words, an electric vehicle that makes sense with a long enough range and is at a price point that millions more people can afford. Tesla can see the path to this vehicle and has plans to make it by building their own battery production facilities and controlling the cost of these vehicles from point A to B. Other companies are still relying exclusively on battery suppliers and aren't really involved in the innovations for the time being, so Tesla has a leg up here. They have years more experience with electric cars and are moving quickly into the battery production space to help them get battery costs down for themselves. This could mean that by the time this $25,000 EV comes to be, it's the only one available near that price and outsells all other electric or gasoline vehicles in its price point. But that's a lot of future talk. How is Tesla growing with the products they currently produce at the price points they currently achieve? Well, I mentioned that Tesla delivered 184,800 vehicles in Q1 of 2021. A year ago, they delivered about 100,000 cars less at 88,400 deliveries for Q1 of 2020. In 2020, they launched the now very popular Model Y, and we can see that that car, along with the continued success of their other three vehicles, have led to steady growth of vehicle deliveries over the the past few quarters. With 184,000 deliveries in Q1, which is always Tesla's slowest quarter, many are expecting that they could easily achieve record numbers this year, possibly surpassing over 1 million vehicles delivered. Even if they just do the same as they did the first quarter every quarter, that's over 700,000 deliveries for the year, far better than their massive achievement of 500,000 deliveries last year. So they're doing great right now with the product they currently offer, but the competition is starting to grow, so it's important to look into the future, and there's a lot to talk about. Real Real quick, I'd like to give a shout out to today's sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace is an all-in-one platform made to help you build a great professional website, online store, or portfolio to integrate with your style and bring your own ideas to life with ease. One particularly great feature about Squarespace is the ability to connect with your audience and generate revenue through gated, members-only content. You can manage members, send out email communications, and get audience insights all within Squarespace. Additionally, all Squarespace websites are automatically optimized for mobile, tablet, and desktop, so your website looks professional in every situation. You can also create incredibly intuitive galleries to display images and videos in unique ways. In my experience, Squarespace is by far the easiest and fastest way to create a professional website. Check out squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Ryan Shaw to save 10% off your first purchase of a domain or website. So back to the future. See what I did there? Tesla has their popular vehicles, their growing energy business, lowering battery costs, and a possible $25,000 EV in the next couple years. What else is on the horizon? First is the biggest part of Tesla that is also the biggest risk in my opinion, full self-driving. Tesla detailed all of their full self-driving plans at their Tesla Autonomy Day event. Here, Elon Musk described their full self-driving computer, the hardware they had been and continued to put in their cars, and the future software implications of self-driving technology. Tesla is taking a route that is much different than any other company. Essentially, there are two different approaches to autonomy when you zoom out far enough. The first approach is using many different sensors, mapping, and LiDAR to inform the vehicle and help it drive itself. This is the approach companies like Waymo, Zoox, Xpeng, and more are using, and it involves a lot of expensive hardware to drive itself. It's also fairly limiting for the time being. The other approach is vision, using cameras exclusively to inform the vehicle. There is a lot more data to be attained from cameras than there is from LiDAR, but it's a much longer process to train it properly and build up a neural network that runs safely. Elon Musk and Tesla have built Tesla Autopilot into all of their vehicles for the last couple years regardless of whether you choose the full self-driving package or not. They are training the neural network, labeling camera data, and improving the technology regularly with software updates, and Elon Musk believes that it will be 
released to all customers later this year, pending regulatory approval. Across the industry, the opinion seems to be that Elon Musk is right about camera data, but based on the results of the full self-driving beta, most think that they are still about a decade away from actual autonomy in their vehicles, along with every other company. However, if Elon Musk and Tesla prove everyone wrong, they will push a software update to customers that immediately makes their car capable of driving itself in nearly every scenario. This will massively increase the value of each Tesla and allow customers to put their vehicles on Tesla's robotaxi network, among many other self-driving uses. It's a big if, but if Tesla truly achieves full self-driving with the hardware included on their cars, they will be doing it for far cheaper than anyone else and will have a technology that no one has achieved yet. It will be huge for their growth as a company, even if it comes later than Elon Musk predicts. The self-driving timeline seems to be the one that Elon continuously misses, but he still thinks that this year will be big for it and Tesla stock. In the past, he has said that Tesla's stock price was too high. However, most recently he tweeted saying, quote, I think there is a greater than 0% chance Tesla could be the biggest company. He followed that up to say, probably within a few months, and then promptly deleted that follow-up as he probably realized it could influence the stock price and get him in more trouble with the SEC. The tweet he was responding to was specifically talking about the implications of full self-driving, so it seems that Elon Musk values this part of Tesla over anything else. In any case, aside from that, on a more practical level, Tesla will be launching the updated Model S and Model X soon. As far as the popularity of those refreshed vehicles, Elon Musk said, quote, there is high demand, so we will soon need to go back to two shifts for S slash X. Please recommend friends for recruiting. That was in a leaked email from Elon to employees. Now, those vehicles have always been less popular than Tesla's Model 3 and Y due to their price point, but this new updated interior along with the insane specs will likely boost sales of these cars again. The plaid version of the Model S will get a zero to 60 under two seconds, making it the fastest production car ever which will absolutely be sought after by people in that price range. Additionally, the Plaid Plus model coming in mid-2022, according to their website, will get even crazier specs and the best range available in any electric vehicle. Again, for people in that price range, it will be sought after for sure. But we're still forgetting maybe the biggest piece of Tesla's vehicle business going forward, the Cybertruck. The Tesla Cybertruck is supposed to begin production by the end of the year. For a while, it wasn't looking great for this vehicle to actually come this year, and Elon Musk was curbing expectations, saying they they'd produce them this year if they're lucky. However, at the same time, we've seen that Tesla has ordered their giant casting machines for the Cybertruck, they are making incredible progress on the factory, and they are planning a pilot production line in Fremont for trial production this year. The pilot production line is said to give Tesla a chance to train the team for the Cybertruck as Giga Texas is constructed, and then they can move over to Giga Texas to begin production as early as June of 2021. This is still a rumor, but sounds reasonable given the massive amount of pre-orders Tesla has for the Cybertruck. According to the Cybertruck, Cybertruck Reservation Tracker, it is estimated that Tesla has now passed over 1 million Cybertruck reservations. Given their current production rates, this means that if you order today, you probably won't get your truck until a couple years after production begins. Keep in mind that this is an estimate and that these orders only require a refundable $100 deposit, so many of these orders will be canceled. However, even a portion of those is insane for the future of Tesla. The Cybertruck is unlike any vehicle we've seen and is achieving its low price point thanks to its exoskeleton design. Additionally, Additionally, it's expected to use Tesla's new 4680 battery cells to help bring costs down and achieve the range it promises. Regardless, at the same time that Tesla will be delivering more and more of their current vehicles, the Cybertruck will begin production and deliveries to a whole new sector of customers. And regardless of your thoughts on the design, there will be a compelling electric truck at a price point far lower than any competitor. We can already expect 2022 delivery numbers to be high for Tesla, and then we'll add in the Cybertruck, which Tesla will be delivering at insane rates when it reaches full production. There's clearly no demand issue there with over 1 million pre-orders. Now lastly, we know that Tesla's mission is to accelerate the world transition to sustainable energy. They're a company concerned with profits and growth, and this entire video is about their potential to become the largest company in the world. However, they also know that they can't become the only car company out there. This is why they will likely partner with other companies in certain respects in the future. I talked last week about Tesla partnering with Toyota, and we'll likely see more partnerships like this in the future. If Tesla's battery costs truly drop further than anyone else, and their overall electric vehicle platforms are beating competitors by a long shot, they will likely work with other companies and expand their business by working across the industry. They'll keep their own vehicles and business vertically integrated, but also make some extra money supplying other companies like Toyota and helping further their mission statement. 
Additionally, there is self-driving, and I definitely see a future where Tesla's autopilot is enabled on other vehicles. For the time being, it's a huge seller for buying a Tesla, but long-term, licensing it might make the most sense for them and will only make them more money in the process. So Tesla passing one trillion? One analyst thinks it's possible thanks to their energy business that many are missing. Tesla passing Apple at over two trillion? Elon seems to think it's possible with full self-driving in a few months. Either way, there is a lot going on for Tesla with their current products and huge potential for so many products, including the Cybertruck, $25,000 EV, new batteries, self-driving, virtual power plant, energy storage, and so much more. I'm very excited to see what the future holds for Tesla, and I'm really hoping we get to see the Cybertruck this year. But what are your thoughts? What do you think will end up being the most important thing for Tesla's growth long term? Leave a comment below and let me know your thoughts. In the meantime, make sure to subscribe to this channel for lots more Tesla videos. Make sure to like this video if you appreciated it. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.